Hi, good people. It's Amy from Saber Savage Scent, and I hope this finds you doing really well. It is a wickedly hot day in Cleveland, Ohio, um, trying to stay cool and testing perfume decants. So um, for those of you who are new to the channel, this mostly focuses on all things fragrance related, um, perfume collecting, reviews, obsession, discussion, learning, etc. For those of you returning, thank you so much for being here. Um, over the next few months, I'm going to be reacting to and reviewing um, decants that so many of you have kindly sent me. Today, I'm going to talk about a box full of goodies from my friend Liz. I met Liz through this channel and she kindly sent me um, a really, really interesting, diverse selection of perfumes to test none of which I have tried before, and they're so cool, so I can't wait to tell you about them. I'm gonna dive right in. Um, first is Commodity Velvet. Uh, I have a little decant here. And um, this one I actually have on my skin today. I um, sprayed it on a uh, perfume tester and just, oh my God, fell in love. This is, so my kind of fragrance. I think for most people, this would be considered a fall or a winter scent, but I don't care. I, I sprayed it and I liked it so much I uh, doused myself in it. I'm gonna quickly read the notes on this one because when I first sprayed it, what I thought I smelled was um, incense, like a really beautiful, sweet um, <sighs> incense with some floral, but I'm gonna to read to you the notes because actually it's a little different than I thought, but it kind of takes me to the same place if that makes any sense. So the notes are clove, almond, and coconut nectar, vanilla flower, rose, and heliotrope, wood, birch, and black amber. And so, of course, black amber sometimes, you know, amber sometimes has that incense -y feel. The heliotrope gives it like a powderiness, but it's not, it's not what I would call like your grandmother's uh, powder. It doesn't smell like Johnson's baby powder or anything like that. Um, and the clove, almond, and cocoa gives it this like buttery feel, but it does, it does kind of smell like incense a little, but it's so much more. It's funny when I first, you know, sometimes when I read that coconut's in a fragrance, I, um, which I said, I put boundaries around it that are unfair because I immediately think, well, it's probably a summertime or a, a beachy scent. And then I forget that like coconut has like this beautiful, it can have either a green or a fresh quality, it can have more of a buttery quality. And I really feel like it comes through here. I've had this on for about a half an hour, an hour, and it's just gorgeous, I love it. Um, I think that it had been out of commission for some time. Um, but it appears to be back on their site. So this is something I'll probably purchase eventually. It's really just me. It's really, I love this. So thank you so much, Liz. This is so beautiful. Um, next is a, um, let's see. I'm gonna go, let's see, to, <clears throat> pardon me. Anasui Sky. Um, I had never tried this and I've seen pictures of it. It looks like uh, a hot air balloon. I meant to look up if it's still being produced. Um, this was a surprise for me. So I tend to not usually like things that are professed as being ozonic or watery or super fresh. Um, uh, long story short, often I feel like, especially when American perfumers um, create something in that kind of description, it often has things like cologne, which is a, um, like C-A-L-O-N, I think it's C-A-L-O-N-E. Um, it's a, a perfume chemical that is supposed to kind of smell fresh, but to me it smells a lot like what's used in dryer sheets these days, and it has a screechiness that Amy does not get along with. Um, this is really different and very cool. I, I wouldn't say that I would buy a bottle, but I love it. Um, the notes are pear, bergamot, pink pepper, lotus, lily of the valley, rose, and then surprisingly, popcorn, vanilla, and musk. I um, sprayed this on the strip and I wrote um, fresh, 
but fluffy. So when you first spray it, you do get some of those things that you would expect in kind of a fresh or an ozonic air-like perfume. Um, it smells kind of clean, but it never reaches that screechy place for me. And I do think that popcorn note gives it like almost a bit of like a fluffiness instead of a screechiness. So it does feel billowy. Like I, I really think this is a perfect description sky. Um, I'm gonna have to look it up and see if it still can be found. The bottle alone is really cool and I would love to have for my collection. Um, frankly, I'm not sure if I need this uh, as far as the perfume. Um, it's really cool though and so much better than I expected it to be, or I shouldn't say better. I like it on my skin much more than I would expect. Um, so that was really, really cool. So Anna Sui Sky. Um, let's see. Oh gosh. Um, another, so this is, I, I hope I'm correct about this. Um, I had a hard time finding information. One is called First Frost. It appears to be either by a company, it says on the label, both villainous. So maybe that's kind of like, Mm, the grouping of perfumes and I think it's called soapbox company this is cool um but there's a quality that I don't like um but I'm going to read to you it's essentially supposed to smell like the first frost so when there's still some flowers but with a kind of frosty feel to it um so the notes are gardenia vanilla eucalyptus and peppermint I do like it more when it dries down and you definitely do get a frosty feel, which I think is really cool. But there's a, I'm just gonna say it. I love independent perfume houses, but sometimes I feel like there's something, I don't know, I don't know if it's in the basicness of the combination or if it's in the, in the oil carrier, I'm not sure, but every once in a while, there's a quality that just smells hippie to me in a way that I don't love. There's a dead quality. I, I don't know how else to say it. It smells, it, there's not, I don't think there's patchouli in this, but it smells a bit like a head shop. And so it's interesting and it does have that frosty feel, but it's not something I love, but it was very cool to try and it's from a house I've never tried before, which is awesome. So thank you. Um, all right, I have four more here, amazing. Um, the remaining four I'm crazy about. So one is um, <clears throat> Comptor Sud Pacific. She sent me these beautiful, um, what company are they from? I should say, oh, gosh, anyway, um, Scentbird. She sent me some really big Scentbird decants, so nice. Um, so this is Comptor Sud Pacific Aloha Tiari. Um, I will just say right off the bat. Wait, I sprayed this here. Um, this is one of the most beautiful white florals I've ever smelled. It is a beautiful, um, summery, you know, like beachy white floral. It's one of the best I've ever smelled. The only one I would say that beats it for me or that comes close or that maybe they're even a tie is um, Solstice Scents has a scent called Nightgown that is just ridiculous. It's like a gourmand white floral. This, um, did I write down the notes? The, the notes are frangipani, tiare, ylang ylang, coconut, vanilla, benzoin, and musk. I just think, um, you know, there's a lot of white florals that have tiare or frangipani, but this cop, cop, this, um, and it's often they'll have something like coconut, maybe in vanilla, but the combination with the lang lang benzoin and musk, this thing, oh my goodness, it is so buttery, rich, heady. Oh, this would just be so gorgeous in a warm beach day, which is about what I'm about, I'm about to enter into here. But it also is so like buttery that I think this would be great in the winter too, actually. Um, it is a gorgeous thing. I only own one other Comptor Sud Pacific. I know people are crazy about the apricot scent. I thought that was okay. But the one I really, really love is the Vanille Banan, the vanilla banana one. Crazy about that. This is definitely one that I will add to my to-buy list. It is so beautiful. So come to our Sud Pacific. 
Aloha Tiare. Really, really, really gorgeous. Um, okay. Another from a small house and I had been dying to try. I've never tried anything from Phantom. Um, this is called, I believe it's Ostaroth or Ostaroth. Ostroth, I believe is the way you say it. Sorry, y'all. Apparently this character is a um, biblical character who was kind of like, <laughs> sorry for the dumbing down, um, a kind of like high ranking demon. But I, it sounded like Ostroth was also a shapeshifter and could be male or female, which I think is interesting. Um, and perhaps even shifted the way they looked. And so it, it sounds as though they were kind of multiple characters. Um, I'm not sure what that lends to the scent, but interesting story. I have really been wanting to try Phantom because they just, I've heard great things about them. They have beautiful packaging. Um, and this thing is so cool. I used to think that I didn't love pumpkin scents. And part of the reason is, and maybe it's because I live in the Midwest, but like pumpkin is so overdone here around Halloween. And it's often put with like that really, really strong, like cinnamon broom kind of smell. And it's so overdone. And it, to me, does not smell like natural pumpkin. It just smells like an overdose of spice. I like spice, but there's something about the way it's done usually. Well, then I tried Solstice scents, um, some of their pumpkin scents, and they're gorgeous and smell more like roasted pumpkin. So does this. So the notes in Ostroth is, are, sorry, peaches, pumpkin, red musk, honey cakes, white chocolate, and pistachio. Are you serious? Like, oh, so many things that I love. It's so gorgeous. So it does, I mean, you can get a hint of the pumpkin, but it really is about the combination. It's a beautiful composition and it definitely smells like I don't even get pumpkin cup high. I get like just the most gorgeous fall perfume. You do get the pistachio a little. Mm, and the honey. It is just gorgeous. And this, and this is another one that I think it's probably best suited for the fall and winter. But because I love this so much, I would wear this anytime. So I also think this is going to add, get added to my to buy list. And I'm excited to try like a sampler set of theirs. I'm going to have to write and see if I can purchase a, you know, um, some samples to try. So this is Ostroth by Phantom. What a wonderful experience. I thank you so much, Liz, because like I've been dying to try them. So last are two scents by Cicely that I have, oh my gosh, wanted to try so much. So I think part of the reason that Liz sent this to me, tell me if I'm wrong, Liz, is, um, I had talked about liking tomato leaf scents or scents that smell like tomato leaf. A lot of those scents happen to have, um, black currant or black currant leaf in them. And so she sent me, um, Cicely's, let me find it here. Eau de Champagne. Um, uh oh, what did I do with it? Here we go. And I sprayed the the day I got it. There were only a few sprays left, and then I sprayed the very last of it on this part of my wrist today. My gosh, this is so cool. I'm gonna be honest. When I first and I had the same experience with um. Clarins Eau de Maison, uh, Caron's Eau de Reglisse, um, what else? Uh, oh gosh, there's a Rochas scent, Eau de Rochas. Um, there's a quality, a super green gardeny quality that when I first sprayed it almost smells a little um, like urine. It's a really bright, sharp, frankly screechy smell. The good news is it dies down in literally a minute. And then what comes out is the most glorious tomato leaf scent. This was, I think, created in like the 70s by Jean-Claude Elena, who's one of my favorite noses. Um, created many, many amazing things, including um, Hermes um, Un Jardin Sur Le Nil, which is just phenomenal. And also has like tomato leaf and carrot and interesting things in it, as far as I remember. I think it has papaya, green papaya. But this Eau de Champagne um, by Sisley 
is essentially, I'm not gonna read you every note, it's a ton of things that would be in the garden, but there's black currant, and also, um, so it has that really strong tomato leaf smell, but it also has oak moss, um, and uh, it is just so, so, so green, but when it dries down, it gets so chic and sophisticated. It's one of those like freshies that to me has a lot of style. It just smells like some of my favorite things in the garden, but with a little twist that just makes it smell really like, I don't know, just refined. It's beautiful. So, so excited to try this. I forgot to look. I think at one point this had gotten hard to find. I'm not sure if it still is, but I know that people who are into tomato leaf and garden smells really, really love it. So definitely get a look into this. Beautiful. And then she also sent a large um, uh, scent bird decant of um, another Sisley scent that, frankly, I had been keeping my eyes on for a couple years because of the bottle alone. It is called uh, Isia La Nuit. And I'm not gonna read you all the notes, um, but essentially, oh God, this is so pretty. It's like these are sister scents. Um, it has some of those, it has black currant in it. It has some of that gardeny to me quality. Um, but the, uh, the oak moss and the floral comes through much, much more. It is such a gorgeous thing. I highly recommend you check out the look of the bottle, Google the look of the bottle. It's this beautiful black and glass sculptural um, bottle. And it reminds me a little bit of Paloma Picasso's bottle, but it has more of a, um, a looser kind of like sculptural feel. It's so beautiful. And this again, I mean, what I'm learning from these two Sisley scents, they just smell so sophisticated. I do think this smells a little vintage in a really good way. It reminds me kind of of my mom's Halston and kind of of Paloma Picasso scent. But um, the floral and gosh, what else? It just smells a little soapy too, but in such a beautiful way. I think honestly, all of these scents could be unisex, but this feels kind of just like perfectly in the middle of the gender spectrum to me. Um, it just smells amazing. But again, I'm gonna say, I think for some people, I'm 50. I think for some people, this would be considered vintage smelling. I love it. Love it, love it. So both of these Sisley scents, I would love to own eventually. So those are the scents from my dear friend, Liz. Thank you so much for sending them. Um, have any of you tried any of these scents? I would love to know. And do you have any of these on your want list? Um, can't wait to talk again. Have a great weekend. Cheers. Bye.